For a driver that aims to drive next to Max Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo certainly isn't helping his case in the first four races of the season, especially because it's Tsunoda who is doing his job this season and not the Honey Badger, who apparently is the more experienced driver of the two. But at the moment, certainly not showing that. For someone who talked so much about wanting to be in a Red Bull seat and how that's his main goal and not to stay in RB, the reality is much more stark for Ricardo. If he continues like this, we could very well see a retirement coming soon, especially because Red Bull have a very talented driver waiting in the paddock. The Japanese Grand Prix started with an intense and perilous moment as Daniel Ricciardo lost control of his car, colliding with Alex Albon, which resulted in a red flag on the first lap and necessitating a return to the pits for the drivers. Initially, Albon's Williams and Ricciardo's RB tangled in Suzuka's first sector, causing both vehicles to veer off the track. And despite coming out of the whole situation unharmed, both Albon starting 14th and Ricciardo Ricardo, beginning in 11th, were unable to proceed in the race. Daniel Ricardo has escaped sanction for the collision, but the FIA stewards have indicated this would not have been the case if not for a pair of mitigating circumstances. The stewards' verdict highlighted that both drivers had a similar understanding of the incident during the hearing as they underscored the significance of Lance Stroll's proximity, particularly the potential threat from the inside, which influenced Ricardo's driving approach towards the corner. The stewards further said they ruled this a first lap incident, warranting no further action. But they also specified that if this incident had occurred on a subsequent lap or without the presence of the third car, a different determination would have been made. With the use of the word or suggesting that Ricardo may well have been sanctioned if not for the specific combination of those mitigating factors. After giving his take on the clash, Ricardo was eager to stress in his mind it wasn't connected to his poor form and just one of those things in terms of a typical first lap collision. Today is a singular moment. I don't look at today and think, oh man, this year, like when it rains, it pours or whatever. I feel it was just one of those things, Ricardo said. We know across that 24 races, it's likely that maybe I'm involved in another lap one incident. There's just probability that these kinds of things happen. It obviously sucks when they do, but I don't look at it any more than today being a kind of singular incident. Of course, it would have been nice to get a race under our belt and try to show a little bit of something that I felt we were starting to show yesterday. We'll do that in China. I'm actually testing on Tuesday, so the laps that I missed today, I'll get back on Tuesday. What this collision means for Ricardo's goal of a Red Bull seat is not good news to say the least. As we remember, last year it was Danny who couldn't wait to get back in an F1 seat and aim to drive in Red Bull sooner rather than later considering his age. However, it was first his broken wrist in the Netherlands, which was the first obstacle in this endeavour, and then it was the great driving of Liam Lawson in the few races where he replaced the popular Honey Badger. This definitely made Horner and Helmut think about whether or not to give Ricardo the seat in RB for 2024, but they eventually decided on exactly that, saying that Lawson will get his chance. Ricardo didn't impress at all in the first four races of 2024, not winning a single point, with the highest position being P12 in Australia two weeks ago. And to be honest, for a driver that is vying for a seat in the best team on the grid, this is the furthest you can possibly be right now from the Red Bull garage, despite the fact that they are next to each other in the pit. This has not been the start to 2024 that Ricardo had been hoping for at Red Bull's second team, RB, and not because the team is failing to hold up its end of the bargain because RB has started broadly as expected with a car capable of challenging for the top 10. And that is exactly what Tsunoda is doing. He has so far outqualified Ricardo every time this season, and were it not the controversial team decisions in the Bahrain Grand Prix, he would have beaten 
him in every race as well. At the start of the 2025 season, the Red Bull team was well aware of the multitude of options available for Max Verstappen's teammate, with Daniel Ricciardo being a primary consideration. However, Ricciardo currently faces the task of rectifying issues within his current team before he can contemplate a return to the top tier. Perez has consistently been viewed as Red Bull Racing's preferred choice, given the convenience of continuity and the sentiment was strongly implied by Red Bull team principal Christian Horner when he referred to Perez's seat as his to lose. However, Perez's contract expires at the end of 2024, leaving him with a lot to prove, which he's so far doing, finishing where he's supposed to on the podium right next to Max Verstappen. Out of the four races this season, Verstappen and Perez finished 1-2 in all but the Australian Grand Prix. Considering Ricardo's close ties to Horner, as it was Horner who advocated for Ricardo's return, his significant market appeal and his positive relationship with Verstappen, it seemed that Red Bull had an ideal replacement for Perez if needed, provided Ricardo could demonstrate he is on par with the driver who departed the team in 2018. Unfortunately, Ricardo has yet to deliver the expected results, and even though Perez, as we mentioned, is performing very well so far, with the exception of Melbourne, where both drivers struggled, Ricardo's prospects may have been slightly boosted had former Red Bull junior Carlos Sainz not won the Grand Prix and earned praise from Horner, who strongly hinted at the team's interest in signs for 2025, considering his upcoming release from Ferrari. Ricardo's in need of a peak performance sooner rather than later to stake his claim in the way his peers have, and he absolutely cannot rely on goodwill or the vague notion that if the car gets better, so will he. Because even if his RB doesn't have a specific problem, and this is a case of the car just not being tuned to his needs, or of Tsunoda dealing with its limitations better than Ricardo, or of Ricardo being ready to do better if the car has a higher peak. That's not really any use to Red Bull at the moment. Red Bull needs Ricardo to prove himself with the machinery he has in order to work out what to do with him. Because if not, then Liam Lawson is right there in the paddock as a reserve driver waiting his chance. And you better bet that he's over the moon seeing how Ricardo performs. We saw last year how ruthless the Red Bull management is because when everyone in the the paddock thought that De Vries will have ample amount of opportunities this season to prove his worth. That wasn't what Christian Horner thought, so the sack happened midway through the season, even though De Vries was praised and welcomed into the team with arms wide open at the start of the season, judging with what we saw in the latest season of Drive to Survive. You can go from rags to riches in the eyes of the Red Bull management, and even though they currently have more important matters to care about with the power struggle, that's not to say that they will completely ignore Ricardo's bad driving and not do anything about it. It's an interesting subplot in the broader Red Bull power dynamic. Ricardo is Horner's man, Tsunoda is there for Honda, Lawson's the driver Marco Rates and wanted in the seat for 2024 after he did well replacing an injured Ricardo last year. Marco didn't get his wish and it's probably no coincidence he's been immediately putting pressure on Ricardo and Tsunoda, although to a lesser degree as he stated publicly that Ricardo needed to produce something better soon even before the Melbourne weekend. Changing drivers during the year is par for the course for Red Bull. It's how Ricardo got back onto the grid last year after all and not only have the rumours started but they're starting to gain strength now. There was even a suggestion that Ricardo might be facing something of an ultimatum, a line the New Zealand Herald newspaper is now pushing and we talked about this one in one of our previous videos. It would be very drastic if the situation was as simple as Ricardo having until Miami in May to turn things around or he'll be replaced. If there's any truth to that, it'll come down to Ricardo's form and where Horner, the RB bosses and Red Bull's parent company stand on the matter. But the main thing is that the Australian must fix his form as soon as possible or this time everyone will expect him to be gone once the summer break comes. Do you 
you think Ricardo will get it together or will he live through the same fate as Nick de Vries? Let us know down in the comments below. We'll see you very soon in the next video.